What's going on, guys? Come on in the room. Happy Tuesday. So glad to be back on another Tuesday night. Prayer, praise, and promises. I see you coming. Go ahead and enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Ah, for the Lord, he is good. His mercy endures forever. So excited to be back. So excited for this series that we have began a couple of weeks ago. I see you. Come on in. Say something as you come in. Do, do me a favor. Speak and share. Yes, hey, yes. Speak and share. God bless you. Get ready to sing with me. Lift up a praise to him. Yeah. God bless each and every one of you. I see you. Y'all ain't saying that. Y'all mighty quiet today. Or it's just populating really quiet. I see y'all coming in. Oh, it's populating quiet. What's going on? It was taking a while to populate. What's going on, Davida Paul? I see you, Kira Lee. I see you, Sister Barbara. God bless you. I'm missing some. But I know y'all speaking, so I'm speaking back. Hey, how y'all doing? Come on in the room. Come on in here. Go ahead and share with somebody as you come in. Y'all help me pray. Hey, Sister Wendy. Hey, Sister Doris. Yeah. Hey, Mother Brad. Come on in the room. God bless you. Y'all know this one. We've been talking about plans, but we're going to praise them tonight before we talk about the plan. Come on, let's just give them praise. I see you. Somebody just put hallelujah in the chat. Bless you, God. Hey, hallelujah. What's going on, Sister Shante? God bless you. Y'all help me sing. We're taking it back old school. Come on. Lift that voice and praise him, praise him. Come on, praise him. Say it, Jesus, blessed Savior. Lift that 
voice right here. Come on, lift that voice. Somebody put a praise on the line. Go ahead and begin to share that praise. Somebody share a hallelujah. Share that praise on the screen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He knows your praise. He knows your voice. We bless you, God. Come on, share that praise. My hallelujah belongs to me. Lift it up here. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. Lift it up, come on. You deserve it. 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 Somebody say it. You deserve it. Come on, say it. All of the glory belongs to you. I don't hear you saying that. Come on, say it. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to you. Yeah. You deserve it. Yeah. You deserve it. Yeah. You deserve it. You deserve it. Yeah. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Your name. You deserve it. Lift it up. Come on, say it. My hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, his glory is here now. Come on, say it. My hallelujah belongs to you. Somebody put a hallelujah on the line. Come on, say it. My hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, go ahead and share that hallelujah. Share that hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, oh, my hallelujah. Go ahead, Judah, share those hallelujah. Come on, share that praise on the line. Share that praise on the line. Hallelujah, hallelujah, belongs to you. Oh, yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. Lift it up one more time, say it. You deserve it. Bless your God. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. No matter what's going on, God. You deserve it. No matter how I feel in my body. You deserve it. You deserve it. We say hallelujah. We say hallelujah. 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 We say all the glory, all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah. 
belongs to you. Oh my, my hallelujah belongs to you. It belongs to you, God. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Lift those hands in his presence. Oh, lift those hands. Oh. As we go to the throne, lift those hands right here. God, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for your presence. We're in awe of you. We're nothing without you. We're hopeless and helpless without you, but with you all things are possible unto us. So we yield to you now. We say yes to your will and yes to your way. <laughs> we ask that you have your way in us in our minds, in our hearts, in our spirits. Speak to us and speak through us, oh God. We need a word from you. We need answers and you have all the answers. Don't let us leave the same way we came, oh God. Renew us, strengthen us, hey God. Revive us, refresh us, oh God, with your word, oh God. Let your word go forth like never before, God. Let a rhema word go forth, speak hallelujah. You said your words are spirit and they are life. Hey, I command life in the name of Jesus to every situation. I command life, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We speak it, we decree it, we declare it. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. It is so and so it is. Now somebody just clap your, come on, clap your holy hands. Clap your hands and give God praise in this place. Yeah, clap your hands and give God praise in this place. We love you. We bless you. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God. We thank God for each and every one of you. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I see you clapping. God bless you. Hey, First Lady uh, Lynn. Hey, 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 Sister Annie. God bless you. I see you clapping. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good and he is worthy to be praised. There is nobody like him in all the earth. Some says search all over. Couldn't find nobody. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Linda. I am so excited about what God is doing in this season. I want you to do somebody a favor right now as we're getting ready to get into the uh, back into this series. I want you to share this with somebody. Somebody needs to hear this. Uh, I believe this word tonight is going to help us so much. I want you to share with somebody. Hey, Sister Blondie, God bless you. Hallelujah. Love you so much. Praying for full and speedy recovery to you. God bless you. Come on, share, share, share. We are talking about the master's plan. We are talking about the master's plan. Um, this is the one, two, three, fourth installment of the master's plan we started this on sunday before last so we spoke of uh the master's plan we talked about the problem uh on, on last not this sunday this sunday that just passed but sunday before last uh, and on tuesday we talked about the pits and on last sunday we talked about the potiphar's and i i pray that you have been receiving this word on the master's plan matter of fact as I was getting ready uh, to deliver this word, it, it dawned on me, it dawned on me that we owe God a praise. And I'm going to tell you why we owe him a praise. We owe God a praise because he has a plan. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We owe God a praise because he has a plan for our life, that we are not here by happenstance. We are not here by luck. We are not here by some spontaneous combustion. We are not here by some big bang theory. We are here because it is the plan of God for us to be here in this season, during this time. Hallelujah. 
for such a time as this. We were born for such a time as this. And we owe God a praise simply because he has a plan for us. And I'm going to tell you right now, hallelujah, when God has a plan for you, hallelujah, you owe him a praise because he has a plan for you. Can we just stop and give God a hallelujah just because he has a plan for our life? Thank you for having a plan for my life. Thank you for thinking, hallelujah, before I got here, you didn't just let me show up, hallelujah. When I showed up, you had a plan. When I showed up, the purpose was already installed. When I showed up, the purpose was already intact. When I showed up, God, hallelujah, you had everything ready for me. I didn't get here and you were fumbling, trying to see what you were going to do uh, with me. Oh, John, here now, what am I going to do? I didn't get here and you were trying to straighten up the front room trying to make room. You already had a plan for me and I'm thankful for your plan. I'm grateful that you got a plan. I'm grateful. I am thankful that you thought about me. Can we give God 10 seconds of praise for thinking about us? God, I thank you for your thoughts. Hallelujah. I thank you for your thoughts. Hmm. Thoughts. Hallelujah. Of peace and not of evil. Hallelujah. To give us an experience it in. God, I thank you. Hey, God, we thank you that you have a plan. And I come to tell somebody, listen, I come to tell you, hallelujah, if, hallelujah, if you are trusting in God, hmm, this was good to me. If you are trusting in God, you got another reason to praise him. If you are trusting and believing in God, hallelujah, Listen, I don't care what's going on right now. If you are trusting and believing in God, if you are obeying his word, I don't care what's going on right now. I don't care how tough it is right now. I don't care how rough it is right now. I come to tell you that things are going according to plan. Oh, God help me. Hallelujah. It might look bad, but things are going according to plan. It might not feel good, but things are going according to plan. Hallelujah. We need to praise God because things are going according to plan. I don't care what the situation is. Things are going according to plan and it's going to work out for my favor. It's going to work out for my good. Things are going According to plan, I'm, 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 I got to calm down. This is Bible study. This is Bible study. I got to calm down, but things are going according to plan. Yeah, yeah, that's the word. Things are going according to plan. So we talked about the problem. We talked about the pits. We talked about, hallelujah, the Potiphar's. And now I want to talk about, whew, the prison. We talked about the Potiphar was the place of preparation, the place of implication, and the place of temptation. I want to talk about the prisons. Yeah, I want to talk about the prison on tonight. Now, how, how, and we're, we're, we're talking about the life of Joseph. So, how did Joseph end up in prison? He ended up in prison because the cougar, we talked about that cougar, we talked about Potiphar's wife. She lied on him. He, he he was innocent, but found guilty. She lied on him and said he he tried to come at her. He tried to uh, 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 he tried to uh, rape her. He tried to take advantage of her, and he was thrown into prison. Thank you. He was thrown into prison. I want to talk about the prisons. I want to talk about the prisons. And I need to tell you, you can take that down. I want. I need to tell you, I need y'all to come in close tonight. I need, I, I need y'all to come in close. Uh, 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 the reason Joseph had to go to prison is because he was never going to get to the palace from Potiphar's house. We're talking about the master's plan. I need you to hear me. The reason that Joseph had to go to prison because he was never going to get, who God, he was never going to get to. He was never going to get to the palace from Potiphar's house. Tell you why? Because Joseph, he 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 was satisfied in a place that was not his destiny. Mm. Come on in, come on in. See, at Potiphar's house, he was the head servant. At Potiphar's house, he had rank. 
at Potiphar's house, he had status on a certain level. At Potiphar's house, he had a he had a pretty good job. Potiphar's house, he was the head servant. He was in charge of everything, and, and uh, uh, he was satisfied there. He he was he. he, he we, we talked about it. he he wasn't complaining he wasn't whining he did his job he did his job well he he was good but he never was going to get to the palace from Potiphar's house God I thank you he 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 was cool where he was he was cool where he was now remember Potiphar's house was a training ground for him but it was not a staying ground I need y'all to follow me. It was a training ground, but it was not a staying ground. So, so what happens is many times we get to a place where we're good and we try to settle in a place that was only meant to be temporary. We try to put our stakes in a place that was only meant to be temporary. You got this job and it's a good job. And I'm not hating. It's a good job. You you like it. It's cool. Uh, uh, you can pay your bills, and, and things are going like you, you you got a little left over, and it's good. And and you you, you begin to settle. Mm, God help me. And what happens is, in the master's plan, God help me <laughs> for Joseph and for many of us. So God had to move him. Listen to this, because he was not going to make any moves himself. Have you ever been in a position where you were not planning on making any moves and God had to move you? Mm. God had to remove you from a place because you are not going to make any moves yourself. So God made it impossible for you to stay. God help me. Hmm. Hallelujah. God made it impossible for Joseph to stay. He had to move because he was not going to get to, pal to the palace from Potiphar's house. He had to move. God's move may not be comfortable, but they are always worth it. Listen to this good. They're always worth it. They're always worth it. I, I've been in places where I was just comfortable and God had to move me. God had to move Joseph because he was not going to move himself. So somebody's been removed from a place. Somebody may have been even fired for nothing. Mm. I, I, I remember uh, I, I, I lost a contract that I thought I had in the bag uh, for nothing. And, and I, I realized that the reason I lost that contract is because God had something better. The reason it did not work out because in the master's plan, he had something better. So God had to remove him from Potiphar's house and he put him in prison. Somebody said prison. Yeah, but God did not just place Joseph anywhere. Because every move in the master's plan is strategic. So let's go to the word of God. Let's go to Genesis 39 and 20. Watch this. Let's go to Genesis 39 and 20 and watch this. It says, and Joseph Masters, who was Potiphar, took him and put him into the prison. Listen to this. A place where the king's prisoners were bound and he was there in the prison. Now, I'm going to read this again. Joseph Master took him and put him into the prison, but not just any prison. Watch this. A place where the king's prisoners were bound. Do you see that? Thank you. Thank you. So God put him. Oh, God help me. God, Joseph went to prison because God knew there was somebody coming that he had to connect with. So God didn't just put him in any prison. God didn't just put him in it at any job. God didn't just put him at any school. God didn't just put him at any church. He put him in the right place. God put him in the prison where the king's prisoners were bound. Yeah, God put him in. So, so his prison bit, bit, though it felt like a punishment, 
it was far from that. God orchestrated a meeting between Joseph, watch this, and the butler. I need you to follow me. I, I, I want you to follow the master's plan. He orchestrated a meeting between Joseph and the butler. So he didn't put him in any prison. He put him in the prison where the king's prisoners. So anytime somebody gets on the king's nerve, they go there. And so I want to. I, I, I want you to. I, I, who is the butler? Who 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 is the butler? I'm, I'm glad you asked. Who is the butler? The butler is the chief servant to the king. We're going somewhere. Just follow me. The butler is the chief servant to the king. The butler is responsible for for the other servants in the house, but he reported directly to the king. I want you to understand. The butler reported directly to the king. So when the king needed something done, he was assisted by the butler. So the butler had status, and I'm, I'm going somewhere, had status not because of what he did. The butler had status because of who he served. I'm going to say it again. The butler might be sweeping the floor. He didn't have status for what he did. The butler might be serving a plate. He didn't have status status for what he for what he did the butler might be pouring a cup he didn't have status for what he did the butler had status because of who he served so what does that tell us the butler served the king let me get three people to say this because you, you we're going somewhere here with this the butler served the king the butler served the king we, we, we're almost here the butler served the king so as we look at this, yeah, yeah, the butler served the king. In, in moving toward our destiny, what we have to understand, uh, uh, it is required that we connect with somebody who serves the king. I need you to put that. Yeah, yeah. Connect with somebody who serves the king. Yeah. Number one, we have to connect with someone who serves the king. So when we're talking about the master's plan, it is important that we make the right connection. Who should we be connecting with? We got to connect with somebody who serves the king. For Paul, it was Ananias. Remember when Paul uh, was blind, he told him to go to Damascus and find a man named Ananias. And God told Paul to go to Ananias and, and God told Ananias, Paul is coming. And Paul connected with somebody who served the king. For Peter, it was his brother Andrew. Uh, uh, uh. For Mary, it was her cousin Elizabeth. For Elisha, it was Elijah. For Timothy, it was Paul. But all of these connected with somebody who served the king. We have to connect with somebody who served the king. Who are you connecting with? You cannot connect with just anybody. God help me. You cannot connect with just anybody. In the master's plan, we have to connect with people, with somebody who's serving the king, who's in your circle. You got to have servants of the king in your circle. If you're going to follow the master's plan, you got to connect with somebody who serves the king. What kind of kingdom connections are you making? That's why I'm against somebody that's not a part of any ministry. You, you just you're not a part of any ministry. You're just out there by yourself. Uh, uh, it, just like it's just you and God and you're not a part of the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ. And every part of the body is connected to another part. Any part of the body that's not connected to another part of the commodity body would shrivel up and die. Because in order to have life, you must be connected to the body. If a finger goes off, if a, a finger get cut off, if they don't sew it back up in a certain amount of time, then that finger will no longer be any good. Because it was disconnected to the body too long. Well, y'all ain't saying that. I, I know y'all ain't going to say that. Have you ever met somebody that talks really crazy? They know the word, but they talk really crazy because they've been disconnected from the body too long. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this. They've been disconnected from the body too long, and now they have misinformation. They they were they are misinformed. They are off. 
in their theory. They are off, hallelujah, in their belief. They are off, hallelujah, even in their prophecies and how they say, because they've been disconnected from the body and they get off. So when we talk about the master's plan, it's important that we connect with someone who serves the king. You put that in your notes, connect your friends. You got to have somebody in your friend circle that serves the king. You got to have somebody in your grouping that serves the king. You got to connect with somebody that serves the king. Do you hear me? Don't you go off all by yourself. Connect with somebody in the master's plan. There are connections. And so God orchestrated this meeting with him and the butler with somebody who was connected to the king. Why do I need to be connected with somebody that served the king? Because some, sometimes you're weak, sometimes you're tired, sometimes you're broken and you can't pray for yourself. You need somebody to pray for you. You need somebody who has access to the king. Hmm. I, I ain't got to go deep into that. Yeah, yeah. but you, you got to connect with somebody who serves the king. So here we are in the master's plan. Joseph now is connected. Somebody is there in the prison with him that knows the king. There's somebody in the prison with him that knows the king. And so here we have it. As time goes forth, as time moves on, the butler and the baker had a dream. Let's go to Genesis 40. Yeah, watch this. And they, meaning the baker and the butler, dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night. Each man, according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of, of the king of Egypt were bound in the prison. And Joseph came in and unto them in the morning and looked upon them and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officer, king, you see how they're connected. They were with him in the ward of his Lord's house saying, wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, we have dreamed the dream and there is no interpret." interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretation belong to God. Tell them, I pray you. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Tell them, I pray you. Now watch this. The last time we talked about dreams in this story, uh, 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 Joseph was dreaming about his brothers making obeisance or bowing to him. You can take it down. Thank you. Uh, uh, bowing to him, showing him deferential respect by bowing to him. Matter of fact, when they first had the idea to try to harm him, they said uh, to themselves, behold, this dreamer coming. So we have to understand something about Joseph. Joseph was a dreamer. Yeah, Joseph was a dreamer. Yeah. And so the last time we talked about dreams is when Joseph was thrown into the pit. And so we haven't talked about dreams until now. And now here, now we didn't talk about dreams in Potiphar's house. There, there, there were no dreams. We, we didn't talk about any dreams in Potiphar's house. But now as we get to the prison, now this dream comes up. Now he is connected with somebody else who's having dreams. God help me. He's connected with somebody else who's having dreams. Oh, God, can, can I tell you something? I didn't put this down like I wanted to. Jo, uh, uh, Judah, I need you to put it down, and y'all going to help me preach this. He, 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 Now that he's in prison, now he is connected with somebody else who's having dreams. What you're going to have to do in the master's plan, we got to connect with dreamers. Oh, God, help me. We got to connect with dreamers. We, we got to connect with somebody else who said, I got a dream and they got a dream. We got to connect with dreamers. Can you put that on the line for me? Help me preach. When we're talking about this master's plan, we got to connect with dreamers. You can't connect with folks that ain't going nowhere. You can't connect with folks that don't want nothing. You can't connect with folks that don't want to do nothing. You got to connect with dreamers. Share the other. I, I want them to help me preach, Judah. Share uh, missionary. We got to connect with dreamers. We got to connect with somebody who, who's, hallelujah, is disturbed because they got a dream. There's something happening. Hallelujah. They're restless because they got something happening. You got to connect with dreamers. Hey, God, I thank you for that. We got to connect 
within the master's plan, we see we connect with dreamers. Yeah. Stop tying your life to somebody that ain't going nowhere. Connect with dreamers. And so as we look at this, that means when we connect with dreamers, that's another way of uh, uh, point two of saying uh, uh, we have to find our tribe. Somebody said find your tribe. Find some like-minded people. I think I got that as, as a point. Find your tribe. That's what I, that's what you got to do. As we connect with dreamers, you got to find your tribe. You got to find the people uh, that, that, that think like you. Find your tribe. You got to find your tribe. Have you found your tribe? Have you ever been in a place and around people and you can tell, I don't really fit here. It ain't that something is wrong with you. It ain't even that something is wrong with them, but that's just not your tribe. You got to find in the master's plan, uh, 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 there, there's come to a point in the plan where you find your tribe. And so here, here Joseph is, whoo, he's finding his tribe. So as we look at the master's plan, not only do we connect with somebody who serves the king, uh, uh, we also connect with people that are connected to us. They're connected to the king, and we also have a connection. There's also something you can, there's a synergy there. There's something brewing there. There is connection there. So you find your tribe. You find, I, I was in a place uh, at, at, at one point I was in leadership and I was in a place and, and I realized these are not my people. These are not the people who, these are not my people. And I end up resigning because those were not my people. Yeah, it, it wasn't my tribe. And then, and, and when I resigned, I found out now those were not my people. And then God started to place me around my tribe. How do I know? I need y'all to hear me. How do we know that we are found our tribe? How do we know we are around the people that we need to be around? Listen to this. Oh, I should have put this down, but y'all type it out for me. Uh, uh, I know that I found my tribe when I, I'm around people that present opportunities for my gift to be unlocked. Uh, you might need to write this down. Listen, I know that I have found my tribe when I get around people who, who present opportunities for my gift to be unlocked. Yeah, they present me with opportunities for my gift to be unlocked. If I'm a singer, they, 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 when they see some an opportunity for singers, they give me a call. You know, they're having a showcase here or they're having a concert here. Uh, you want me to put a word in for you? I know so-and-so. Uh, 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 I get around people who give me oppo present opportunities for my gift to be unlocked. If I'm a painter, they say, oh, they're having an art show. They're having something going on. Or I know somebody who needs a piece in their house. Do you have something available? Available. Listen, they present you with opportunities for your gift to be unlocked. You know you have found your tribe when they present you with opportunities for your gift to be unlocked. You know you have found your tribe when you get around people that stir up your spirit, that stir up your creativity, that stir up your, ooh, ooh they, they wet your palate for more. You know you have found your tribe when you get around people, hallelujah, and you want to do better because you are around them. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. You know you have found your tribe when they wet your you they wet your appetite for better. Mm, God help me. Hallelujah. Well, you know you have found your tribe when they challenge you to use your gifts, not scare you into hiding them. Yeah, I, I, oh God, I think there's a, a, a delay in, in, in what you're saying. Uh, 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 if y'all can hear me clearly, just somebody say, I hear you, I hear you. I want to make sure that this is on time. Uh, uh, you found your child when they challenge you to use your gift, not scare you into hiding it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because see, sometimes uh, you, you, it ain't your tribe when they're always telling you, 
going on somewhere over there. You need to, okay, y'all hear me. I, I'm just making sure. Uh, 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 they always trying to smother your gift. That's not your trial. I'm not telling you they don't say wait, but they always trying to smother you. They always trying to hide you, man. Ooh, they, 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 they don't. That, that ain't your tribe. That ain't that ain't your tribe. Your 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 tribe is always trying to present you with opportunities. Uh, for, for your gift to be unlocked. They're challenging you to practice. They're challenging you to rehearse. They're challenging you to prepare. They're challenging you to get ready. They whet your appetite for more. Get around people that whet your appetite for more. Get around people in, in the physical. Get around people that want to do better physically. Get around people that want to do better financially. Get around people that want to be better uh, uh, spiritually. Get around dreamers. Get around people that want to do better. This is the master's plan. God help me. Get around people who that push you. And to win, don't let you settle for less. I'm going to push you. I'm going to unlock an opportunity for you to use your gift. Mm, hallelujah. I love it. Because in the if you look at in the master's plan, uh, if you look at the story in, in the New Testament, in the master's plan, when Mary walked in to Elizabeth's house, watch this, the baby inside of Elizabeth leaped. Ooh, this disturbed me up. I, I, I got to get there. Woo, hallelujah. When Mary walked in pregnant ooh, with baby Jesus, when, when, when Mary walked in into Elizabeth's house, into Elizabeth, Elizabeth's space, the baby inside of Elizabeth leaped. So what does that tell us? We got to connect with people, oh God, who get excited about the gift that's inside of us. I'm going to say that again. Get around people who get excited about the gift that's inside of you. That's your tribe. When you see them excited about the gift that's inside of you, when, they, when you see them excited about your opportunities, when you see them excited about your chance to do better, when you see them excited, hallelujah, about your promotion, when you see them excited about the gift inside of you, that's your tribe. God help me. Whew, I found my tribe. I, I, I got to get around people who are ex excited about what God is doing in my life. So we see here uh, that Joseph is walking into his tribe because the, the butler whew, is giving him an opportunity to unlock the gift that's inside of him because Joseph was a dreamer. So now Joseph walked in and see them despondent and disturbed because they had a dream. And immediately Joseph said, does not interpretation belong to God? Tell me your dreams. And they began to tell him the dreams. And, and Joseph, and you know the story, Joseph gave them the interpretation of their dream. He told the butler uh, uh, in three days, uh, you're going to be restored back to the palace. He told the baker in three days, they're going to take you out of here and they're going to execute you. And everything that Joseph said came to pass because Joseph uh, uh, was a dreamer. Joseph was, was this skilled in interpretation because he had a gift from God. And so now we see that everything that Joseph said came to pass. When they told him the dreams, everything he said came to pass. And so as we look at this, as we look at this, everything that Joseph said to them came to pass. And so now the butler has returned, God help me. He has returned, he had returned to the palace. But when he returned to the palace, he forgot about Joseph. I'm, I'm getting ready to close. When he returned to the palace, he forgot about Joseph. I got a question for you. You may have been through this. You may have been through this. What do you do when the person you helped is doing better than you? God help me. I'm going to drink some water on that. You helped this person. This person was in a low place. This person was in a bad place. And, and, and you helped this person get back on their feet. 
You got them back on their feet. They are doing better than you now. And they forgot about you. What do you do when the person you help is doing better than you? They're doing better than you. They're in a place where it seems like they can help you and they, they didn't forget about you. And you help get them there. You help get them the job. Now they're the CEO. Now they the, And they won't give you a promotion. They forgot about you. God, help me. They're doing better than you and they forgot about you. Joseph helped the butler. He took care of the butler while he was locked up. Joseph listened to him and gave him godly wisdom to see him through. But the butler forgot about Joseph and left him in prison. Do y'all hear me? The butler left Joseph in prison. Forgot about him. He left him in prison. What do you do when the person you help is doing better than you. Yeah. Oh, God. What do you do? You have patience. Yeah, yeah. Somebody said patience. Because patience, in the master's plan, patience is required. I got to close with this. In the master's plan, patience is required. It is requirement. I'm going to go to one scripture here. I want to go to Hebrews 10 and 36. Pull it up for me. Pull up. It says, for ye have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. You got to understand this, whew, this requires patience because at this point, in Joseph's life, he had done everything that God had called him to do in every season, in the pit, who God, in Potiphar's house, and in the prison. Joseph had done everything that God had told him to do. He did not yield to temptation when that woman tried to pull him in. Hallelujah. He worked his job at Potiphar's house. He worked as a leader even in the prison. He was over the prison. He had been operating in his gift. He had been doing everything that God told him to do, yet he was still in the prison and the butler forgot about him. Now, Joseph, it is required that you have patience. In this season, you have, God help me. You have to have patience. Patience is required. Yeah, somebody out there, you 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 probably can testify out here. Some some woman out there, hallelujah. God was about to send you a Boaz, but because you wasn't patient, you ended up with a bozo. You ended up with a bomb because you weren't patient. Now you're in your feelings. Oh, that was tough there. That was tough because patience is required. It is required. You got to, oh God, help us. You got to have patience. Bible says in James 1, let patience have her perfect way, work. You got to let God get through doing what he's doing. You got to let God get through doing what he's doing. Hallelujah. I know you feel like you are in a prison, but I come to tell you, you are not in prison. You are in process. Oh, God, you're not in prison. You are in process. God is working things out. You are in process. You have to have patience. Patience, my friend. Patience, my sister. Patience, my brother. You got to have patience. It is required. And why is it required? You may ask. I'm going to tell you this, and I got to pray. Uh, uh, the reason you have to wait is because the master is creating a position for you. The master is creating a space and a place for you. The master is creating. You're not in prison. You're in process. He is creating and it's going to happen at the appointed time. You have an appointment with destiny. Destiny. I need somebody to, to help me teach this. Destiny is not random. Destiny happens on appointment. God, help me. I've, uh, destiny happens 
on appointment. We think that we can manufacture it and make it happen. Destiny does not happen like that. Destiny happens on appointment. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I feel the presence of God because he, uh, because he, he, destiny happens on appointment. So many times we are disappointed. <laughs> Hallelujah. For no reason we're disappointed uh, only because it's not the appointed time. Don't be disappointed because it's not your time. Have patience because destiny works on appointment. You have an appointment with destiny. You got to be patient enough so you can see it. Patient is required. So Joseph, you got to wait. You're not really in prison. It feels like prison. You're in process because God is making the position for you. If Joseph had got out too early, listen to me good. If the butler had got him out too early, I believe that Joseph would have got out of the prison, but he would have had the same, he wouldn't have the job he had. He would have had the same job he'd been having. He would have just been doing stuff around the palace. He would have been helping out around the palace, cleaning up and, and serving and doing this. If he had got out too early, he would have come out before the appointment. It would have been, hallelujah, premature because the position, the appointment, the, the, the position was not fully, it was not, full, the time had not fully come. God help me. When the time is fully come, that's when it's going to happen. When the time is fully come, that's when it's going to manifest. When the time is fully come, that's when the breakthrough is going to happen. Stop trying to manufacture. We are servants. We got to wait. God help me. We got to wait. We got to wait. We got to wait. We got to wait. So we see here, Joseph is now. He's, fin he, he's finished. Now he got to wait. Let me talk to some single friends here. Let me talk to you. Uh, be open, but don't be desperate. You got to wait. So, some people are, are desperate, and you're gonna mess it up, and you're gonna you're gonna mess it up because you, you, you you're desperate. No, no, you can be open, uh, 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 but don't be desperate. You got to to wait. You uh, 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 be thoughtful, but don't be thirsty. Ooh, ooh, God, this be, be be thoughtful. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Somebody out there, you, you you're waiting on so be thoughtful, but don't be thirsty. You 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 got to you got to wait. You got to have patience. Go somewhere and breathe. Go somewhere and woosah. Go some because you have to wait. Mm. Be patient. God help me. Be patient. It's required. It's it's required. God, it's required because God is He is setting it up. He's setting it up. Yeah, you have served some people who have forgotten about you, but God is setting you up. And I and I hear the word release. There is about to be a release, but not before time. There is about to be a release, but you have to be patient. And I'm I'm gonna close it because that's that's the word there. You have to be patient. Yeah, I'm gonna close it right there. You have to be patient. Yeah, you, you, you got to connect with somebody. You got to connect with those that serve the king. You got to connect with dreamers. You got to find your tribe. Then you have to be patient. And I want to pray because there are so many of us that are antsy. God help me. There's so many of us that are so full of anxiety. We can't rest. We can't sleep. We are so full of anxiety. Anxiety is when we try to take on tomorrow today. That is the definition of anxiety when we try to take on tomorrow today. The Bible says sufficient thereof. Uh, sufficient is the evil thereof today. Sufficient are the things today. We got enough stuff today to be concerned about. 
We live today. We plan for tomorrow, but we live in today. Do not try to take on tomorrow today. Be patient. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. And I need you to decree this out of your mouth. I need you to speak this out of your mouth. God, give me more of your spirit. I need you to say it out of your mouth. God, give me more of your spirit. And the reason we ask God for more of his spirit, because a part of his spirit is patience. A part of his spirit is long suffering. <laughs> God, thank you for patience. Thank you for giving me what I need to wait on the blessing. Thank you for giving me what I need to wait on the miracle. Come on, pray it. Thank you for giving me what I need to wait on the manifestation. Give me the word I need. Put the people around me that I need to be around me. Help me find my tribe and help me to wait on you. Help me to wait on you. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Help us to wait on you. I know we've helped many, and many have gone on and forgotten about us, God, but we wait on you. God, we wait on you. I'm praying for you tonight. I'm praying for you tonight. God, we wait on you. God, your people, we wait on you. Uh, we come against the spirit of anxiety. We come against the spirit of depression. Ooh, we come against this anxiousness that takes over of our mind so many times. Oh, God, we sit and we wait on you. Give us your peace that passes all understanding in this time of waiting. In this time of waiting, give us your peace that we can wait on you. <laughs> God, that, that we will praise you in the wait. That we will worship in the wait. Huh? That we will worship in the wait. That we will lift our hands in the wait. That we will serve, continue to serve. Joseph never stopped serving in the wait. Even though he was forgotten about God, he never stopped serving. And so we give us a spirit of Joseph that we can wait and we can serve even while we're waiting. God. Because we know that there is an important time that the destiny that you have planned for us will happen at an important time. Oh, God, we thank you and we love you. We bless you. And we call it done in the mighty name of Jesus. It is so. I, I feel that really heavy in my spirit. Ooh. Wait, wait, wait. Be patient. God is working on your behalf. God is setting things in motion. Ooh, God is putting people in place. God is making space for the gift that he has put inside of you that when he promotes you, it'll be time for your gift to be used, but you have to wait. Yeah, hey, hey, you have to wait. Mm, God, I thank you for your word. I pray that you receive that word tonight. I pray that you receive that word tonight. God, I thank you. I thank you. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you while you're in the prisons, who that you connect with those that serve the king. That's the reason you're there. That's the reason he has put you in the place so you can connect with those that serve the king, so you can find your tribe and connect with dreamers. But even in all that, there is a time of waiting. God. Uh, and we thank you. Oh, God, I, I, I feel the glory of God. I, I want to encourage somebody who's feeling like giving up. I'm, I'm about to close this, but I want to encourage somebody who's feeling like giving up. Don't you give up. Wait. There is a release, but you have to wait. God bless you so much. I want you to sow a seed. Ooh. I want you to sow a seed. We usually ask for five, but if you can give 10, if, if you can give five, give five, but if God is laying on your heart to give 10, I want you to sow a seed. I want you to sow a seed tonight because I, I, I believe 
that God is doing something miraculous. I I I I, I feel a shifting. I, I I sense that God is about to break open some things. Oh God, and I thank Him. Uh, uh, God is about to break open some things, and I want you to sow a seed right here in the Master's plan because He has a plan for your life. I want you to sow a seed sow a seed. We believe this is good ground. We see it on the screen. I want you to sow a seed and let's watch God do something awesome in our life. I pray that you receive this word. Listen, this we're coming up on Resurrection, resurrection Weekend. Uh, 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 I want you to make plans to be in the house this Sunday. We are coming to the last installment of the master's plan. And I believe it was intentional by God that he had me to start this and do it on Sundays and Tuesdays. I've never done a series on Sundays and Tuesdays. I've always, if I did a series on Tuesday, it was Tuesday only. If I did a series on Sunday, it was Sunday only. But this is the first time. I don't believe it's going to be the last time. But he had me to do it on Sundays and Tuesdays and Sundays and Tuesdays. And leading up, and it's something that the last installment, hallelujah, will be on Resurrection Sunday. Be in the house as we close out this series. Don't you miss it for nothing in the world. God is going to have his way this Sunday. Be in the house. Hallelujah. Listen, even on this Thursday, St. Mark and the surrounding area, Mount Bayou, Shelby, uh, uh, Alligator, uh, Marigold, Cleveland. Listen, uh, come over to Bethel this Thursday night. St. Mark is going to be there. Hallelujah. And we're going to be sharing in communion with them. And, and we're going to speak a word over there this Thursday. That's two days from now. This Thursday. Meet us there in the great city of Mount Bayou, right there at Bethel. It's right there on the old uh, uh, 61 Highway. You can't miss it. Be there at 7 p.m. And, and let's have some church over there at Bethel this Thursday. God bless y'all. Love y'all so much. Uh, I was so excited to share this word tonight, and I believe, uh, I, I hope it helped you like it helped me, and hallelujah. Let's come back Sunday and hear the conclusion of this matter. God bless y'all. Have a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday. Until we see you again, God bless. Peace. Love you.